Our tour today takes us to our baptism areas in St. Austin. We have a couple of different areas and we get to explore them deeper. So the first thing that you will see when you walk in to our narthex is the original baptism room. If you look at the gates, there are wave patterns on the gates, which represented baptism. It is now a reconciliation room and the wooden wall and doors were added when it was changed. The original marble baptismal font is now located in the narthex near the center doors and it originally stood in the middle of this room. There are storage shelves in the reconciliation room that were used to hold liturgical vessels for baptisms, which were kept there. Now we see the three oils for baptism, confirmation, and anointing of the sick. The mosaic is Venetian, and it is a beautiful picture of John the Baptist who baptized Jesus. Here we have a mosaic of John the Baptist in our original baptism room. John the Baptist's parents were Zachariah and Elizabeth, who was Mary's cousin. One day, an angel appeared to Zachariah and announced that he was to have a son named John, who would prepare Israel for the Messiah, Jesus. Zachariah doubted that Elizabeth, his aged wife, could bear a child. Zechariah asked for a sign, and the angel obliged. He was struck dumb until John's birth. When the baby was born, the old man cuddled him and celebrated him with a beautiful song in Luke chapter 1, verses 68 through 79. St. John the Baptist began his ministry 30 years later. He called people to repent and baptize them in water as a sign of purification. Jesus himself approached John for baptism. Behold, the Lamb of God, John declared to the crowds, who takes away the sin of the world. He resisted baptizing Jesus, but acquiesced when Jesus explained that he wanted to set an example of righteous behavior. John was sentenced to prison because Herod, the ruler of Galilee, feared that John the Baptist might foment a rebellion. While in prison, John was bothered with doubt about Jesus. He had expected the Messiah to come more forcefully with a winnowing fan in his hand to clear the threshing floor. Thus, he sent his disciples to ask Jesus if he was really the Messiah. Jesus responded that he fulfilled all the messianic signs, healing the blind, the deaf, the lame, and leopards, raising the dead, and preaching good news to the poor. Then Jesus praised John the Baptist to the crowds as more than a prophet and as a greatest man who ever lived. Here we have our original baptismal font. It is represented with a few shells and shells are often used to pour the waters of baptism on the head of the one to be baptized. The water is cleansing, renewing waters of baptism and to purify the water we say, ego te absolvo, I clean away from you. It is grace, divine life, and eternal life. Our final stop on our baptism tour is our current baptismal font. Let's talk about the actual sacrament of baptism and where it came from. So we become members of Christ and the church through the sacraments of initiation, which are baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. In the Old Testament, Many images of water have helped us understand baptism. Each year during the Easter Vigil, the night before Easter, the water that will be used in baptism is blessed. The prayers of blessing call these images to mind. At the time of creation, the Spirit breathed upon the waters. During the great exodus, the waters of the Red Sea parted, allowing the people of Israel to cross from slavery to freedom. Later, in the New Testament, John the Baptist administered a baptism of repentance to Jesus in the waters of the River Jordan. Knowing that baptism is necessary for salvation, parents have their babies baptized not long after they are born. Baptism signifies the baby's entrance into the church. The community of believers, our parishioners, and the parents make a commitment to care for and teach this child as he or she is raised in the Catholic faith. 
In the early church, infant baptism was not the usual way that people became members of God's family. Initiation into the church was primarily done for adults. They had to enter into a long period of learning and praying with the Christian community. Adults seeking to enter the church today normally enter into the process of the Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults, or RCIA, as catechumens, those who need to be baptized. During this process, they learn what God has done through Jesus, the teachings of the church, and how they may respond in faith to God's call. In the celebration of baptism, a person is immersed in water or has water part poured over their head. He or she goes all the way into the water and then comes out. This action is a symbol of dying to sin and rising to new life in Christ. Sometimes water is poured over a person's head. The celebrant proclaims, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The person being baptized is anointed with two oils. The oil of the catechumens is put on the chest and the chrism oil is put on the top of the head. Oil is a symbol of strength and healing. A candle is lit during the celebration. This shows that the person baptized is asking to keep the flame of faith alive in his or her heart. Through baptism, a person receives forgiveness of original sin as well as personal sins. The newly baptized person receives sanctifying grace and is sealed with a permanent spiritual mark. This is why baptism can only be celebrated once. St. Paul the Apostle wrote about the change that takes in a baptized person in Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 4. Paul explained that in baptism, Christians are united with the death of Jesus. They are in a sense buried with him. Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. United with Christ's believers also rise from the dead to live in newness of life. Next to our baptismal font is the Paschal Candle, which we get every year at Easter Vigil. The Paschal Candle represents Christ, the light of the world. It is made of pure beeswax which the candle is made represents the sinless Christ who was formed in the womb of his mother. The wick signifies his humanity, the flame, his divine nature, both body and soul. There are five grains of incense inserted into the candle in the form of a cross. Recall the aromatic spices with which his sacred body was prepared for the tomb and of the five wounds in his hands, feet, and sides. During the Easter vigil on Holy Saturday night, the night before Easter, the priest or deacon carries the candle in our procession into the dark church. A new fire, symbolizing our internal life in Christ, is kindled, which lights the candle. The candle representing Christ himself is blessed by the priest, who then inscribes in it a cross, the first letters and last of the Greek alphabet, Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end, and the current year. As he chants the prayer below, then affixes the five grains of incense. The Easter candle is lighted each day during Mass throughout the Paschal season until Ascension Thursday. It is also used in times of funerals. I really hope that you enjoyed learning more about our baptism areas at St. Austin's, as well as learning more about the sacrament of initiation.